Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Do you believe in demons? That is, that they exist? And if we live unrighteously and go against the word of God, that it will serve as an invitation to them to cause us problems. Now, we know something. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that means if you are a believer, a demon cannot possess you, but a demon can indeed cause you problems. And that's why we need to walk in obedience to Messiah. That's why we need to be near him. And how do we get near him? By putting his word into action in our life. That's what being faithful is all about. And the reason why I asked, do you believe in the existence of demons, is because many people who say that they are believers, they do not think that demons exist. And what is the great problem with that? Well, when Messiah spoke, and we're going to see a passage today that he believed in demons. And when we disagree with him, we really don't know who he is. In fact, it's going to be very interesting because in this passage of Scripture, we're going to see him revealed as the Son of God, meaning that he is God. Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Luke and chapter 8. The book of Luke and chapter 8. Let's begin in verse 26 where it says, And they sailed into the region... And depending upon your Bible, it will either say the Gerasenes or a different word if you're following the Texas Receptus. It is the Gadarenes. So two different words, but we're speaking about an area on the other side of the Jordan River. And that means that we have left what is commonly referred to as the land of Israel and gone into another area on the other side. And remember what we talked about. That other side has to do with that which is opposed to the things of God. And it shouldn't surprise us on what Messiah and his disciples are going to encounter in a few minutes. So we see that they passed through sailing to the other side, to the region of the Gardarenes, which is opposite of Galilee. Now, I would underscore that term, Galilee. Why? I've shared with you that every time that the term Galilee is mentioned in the Bible, it is recorded in order to teach us something. And that is that God wants to reveal something to us. So Galilee comes from a Hebrew origin that means to reveal, to disclose something. And we're going to see what that is in a moment. Look at our next verse, verse 27. But went out to him, and that is to Yeshua. There was one who went out to Yeshua. And we read here, that, that this one, upon the coming to the land, this region, this one who went out to meet Yeshua, he came before him. And notice what the scripture says. This was a certain one from the city who had a demon. And notice what the scripture says. Out of a long time. So this one was demon-possessed. And the implication is, he was in this condition a long time. Now, notice something else about this one. It says as well that clothes 
he did not wear and in a house he did not remain but among the tombs now this one tombs synonymous with death and demonic influence is going to bring us closer to that that represents death and what represents death Well, my hope is that you would know the answer to that because the answer is sin. Demonic influence leads us into sin, and sin brings us near to death. So this one, no longer living with a family, no longer living in his home, but had gone out to dwell among the tombs. Look at verse 28. But seeing Yeshua, he cried out, and he fell before him, meaning he bowed down to him, and in a great voice he said, What to me and to you, which means it's an idiom, we might translate it this way. What do we have to do with one another? He's saying, what do you and I have to do with one another? And this is obvious. Messiah is of that which is connected to the purposes, the plans of God. And of course, this one who is possessed by a demon, this one is in opposition. So there's no relationship between them. But here's what's important. Messiah came in order to bring deliverance, to set free the captives. We learned that from the prophecy of Isaiah. And this one, he is being held captive by demonic influence. And therefore, we should not be surprised what Messiah is going to do. Look again at verse 28 where it says, But seeing Yeshua, he cried out and fell down before him in an act of submissiveness. And in a great voice he said, What is there between me and you, Yeshua? And notice how he addresses Yeshua, the Son of the Most High God. And then notice what he says. I beseech you, do not me torment. Now, he knows something. Eventually, demons are going to be tormented for eternity by Yeshua. They are going to be defeated and they're going to be punished forever and ever and ever. And here's the message. If we succumb to demonic influence, how do we do that? By doing things our way, relying upon our own understanding. Now, again, if we're a believer, we're not going to be possessed, but there are many people who are, and I believe truly, have received the gospel. But because they reject much of this book, or because they are not wise enough and humble enough to apply it to their life, they are not living this life of liberty, a liberty whereby we can serve God. But what's going on? They are succumbing to the deceit and the the activity of demonic influence in their life now i want to pause for a moment because there is a very well-known bible teacher who that is it doesn't matter but i think it's so uh, unfortunate that he has said that he would like to see the new testament to be unhitched from the old testament he wants to emphasize the new testament fine emphasize the new testament but then preach all of what the new testament says and the problem is this if you listen to him and i listen to him frequently you never hear him teach about the enemy about satan about demons about repentance about a coming judgment and what happens well what is soon to follow is compromise When you begin to doubt and reject and fail to teach all of God's word, you are on a pathway that's going to lead to compromise. 
and little by little, and then more and more, you are going to disagree with the word of God. And that's exactly what's happening with this individual. Now, let's not point our fingers, but let's pray for him. Let's hope and intercede that this one will come back to a respect and an honoring of all of God's word and realizing that this is one book we can't unhitch the old from the new. Because if we don't understand the old covenant, we certainly are not going to understand the new covenant. We know something. The major themes and messages and the content of the Old Testament finds itself into the New Testament. Those major points of the Old Testament are indeed the same major points that we find in the New Testament. So this one says to Yeshua, I beseech you, do not me torment. Look at verse 29. Now, why was he saying this? Well, what does Yeshua do? He wants to bring deliverance. And therefore, it says, for he, this is Yeshua, had commanded that unclean spirit to come out from the man. For frequently, literally means many times, many times, this, this demon had seized him and bound him. What happens? Well, because he had been seized by this demon and done things. Also, the community. What had they done? They had uh, bound this one with chains and also with fetters. That is a special shackle that goes upon the feet that, that they did that in order to keep him meaning keep him from harming the community. And what did he do? He used to break these chains. And he was pressed out by the demons, meaning he was led out. He was forced out into the, the desert. And what's in the desert? Nothing. Why did the demon lead him out there? Well, not to trust God. That's what we normally see with the desert. But he let him out because he wanted to see him dead. That's what demonic influence is. It is destructive and frequently it leads to death. He wanted this one to not have any provision. And therefore, without provision, one will die. That is how demons work and act in someone's life. Keep reading with me. Now we're ready for verse 30. But Yeshua asked him, saying, What is your name? And this one said that his name is Legion. Why? Because in actuality, there's not one demon, but there are many demons, a legion of demons and i think it's so significant that he used that word because it's a military word word therefore that teaches that we are in a spiritual battle we are in a spiritual war this is what this is being taught in this passage so he said legion because many demons have entered into him verse 31 and he beseeched him in order that he would not command them, those demons, to go into the abyss, meaning go away into the abyss. What's the abyss? In this context, the place of punishment. They don't want punishment. Now, they're going to ultimately receive that. But, but demons think, and they cause us to think in that same way, never about judgment. That, that's tomorrow, that's next year, that's in the next decade, but it's not today. And therefore, they were saying to him, that is, the demons were saying through that legion, that voice of that man, do not send us away into the abyss, verse 32. But there was there. Now, I would emphasize that because that word there in the original language is emphatic meaning 
the text itself is emphasizing this word now there why is that so important well we're going to see that there is a community that is far removed from the authority of God meaning they don't want to submit to God's revelation and how do we know that well look again at the text verse 32 but there was there a herd of swines pigs in other words and this was a large herd of swine and they were feeding on the mountain now here's the question what are pigs doing in this location now true it perhaps is outside the borders of israel at that time but we need to see something it's still within the biblical borders meaning the land that god promised abraham and this community well this community was a rebellious community what were were they partake, partaking of well if they have a herd of pigs and there were those as we'll see who were feeding them they were pork eaters now it's very clear in the word of god that that god has said there are certain things which are permissible for food and other things are not and i know all the passages that speak about well in this passage god changed his mind in that packet pack passage he allows it no if you study it properly you will find that it has nothing to do in conflict with those dietary laws and therefore it's significant we're studying from where the gospels what gospel luke and we're going to see these aren't my words but we're going to see that there's a connection between demons and pigs this is what the word of god is revealing and you might say i don't accept that that's your prerogative but the word of god unites pigs and demons in this passage of scripture so again we see here that there were a large herd of pigs being fed upon the mountain and verse 32 second part and they beseeched him in order that he would permit them into them meaning into the pigs that they would go and it says here and he permitted them now again we need to ask these demons they could have went someplace else they could have simply departed but we see a connection biblically in the text between demons and pigs I would take notice of that and i would learn from that something very significant that the word of god does not change and and look at those passages where where people say oh messiah permits this messiah cleanse all food look at it in the original language you can check it out and you'll find that they add a whole bunch of words and they leave other words out in order to justify their desires but it is not an accurate translation of the original language because god is the same yesterday today and forever well look now to verse 33 it says here but the demons went out from the man and entered into shouldn't surprise us entered into the pigs and what happened and rush down this herd of pigs rush down down this ramp this slant remember they were on the mountain so they're going down this incline and they went into the the lake that is the sea of galilee and what happened to them and they drowned now notice something see what is a simple takeaway a simple lesson well well demons don't make good decisions and that's why we don't want to be under their influence because if we are and we're doing things our way when i think i'm making the decisions no i'm hearing satanic propaganda so demons make dumb decisions they make decisions that lead to destruction and death don't listen to them you say well how can i be assured that i'm not listening to them by obeying the word of god 
And here again, people will have controversy with these words, but they're simple truth. We listen to God and get his counsel by his word. Don't reject the word of God, because when you reject the word of God, you're rejecting his authority over your life, and that serves as an invitation to be deceived by the enemy. So what takes place? Look at verse 34. But the ones who were feeding, they saw what had taken place. And what did they do? They fled. And they went away and they proclaimed in the city all on all through the land, meaning that countryside. So they went into that chief city where they were from, where that that demon-possessed man was from. And they proclaimed in that city and also in that country. Verse 35. But they had gone out to see. There were others who had gone out to see this happening. And they came to Yeshua and they found the man sitting. The man from whom these demons had gone out. And what was he this time? Well, remember, he used to, for a long time, didn't wear clothes. But now he is clothed, and look in the middle of verse 35. He was in his sound mind. He was wise. He had understanding. He had returned to thinking as a man should think. And how do we know that? Well, just keep reading. We're going to see what it means to be in a wise frame of mind. And that's what Messiah does for his followers. What was he doing? Look at the end here. Verse 35 where it says, He was was sitting and in his right mind having been clothed. And where was he sitting? At the feet of Yeshua. Now that's a good thing. This expression, sitting at the feet, well, we could say it in Hebrew with the word yeshiva. And yeshiva is a place where you study within a Jewish context, you study God's revelation. And therefore, that's why he was sitting at the feet of Yeshua. He was in his right mind and he had put on clothes, meaning he had had hid his shame. He was naked all the time now. He is dressed. See, Messiah, when we follow him or under his influence, being led by his spirit, we're not going to be going towards shame and embarrassment. Verse verse 35 at the end, the people saw that. What should they have done? Praise God. But instead of praising God, what were they? Afraid. And they asked him who? All this large multitude who had gathered. They asked him that that he would do something. Now, this large crowd from the area all about this land of the Gerardines, what happened? They asked him, they were beseeching him, it's a strong phrase, that he would depart from them because of what? Because of their great fear. Now, they were fearful. They didn't get rid of the demon-possessed one. They bound him. But they kept him. But Yeshua, they wanted to get rid of. They didn't want the change that Messiah brought to them. They didn't want to see the destruction of their pigs that they loved to eat so much. They didn't want that type of change. Let me ask you a question. Do you? Are you willing to change and put things that may be very common in your culture away? for the sake of obeying the word of God. That's what it comes down to. And we see here that there was that great fear that had seized them. And what happens? Well, they asked Messiah to depart, to go away. They were afraid of the change that he was bringing. That fear seized them. And what happens? But he, this is Yeshua, he got into the boat and he went away it means that he turned back he went back to where he was where was that israel proper verse 38 now it says here the man the same man and this is how we know that he was wise this 
man from whom the demons had gone out. He beseeched. He was begging. And what did he beg? He was begging to be with him. He wanted to stay with Yeshua. But Yeshua sent him away saying, return into your house. Now, house oftentimes is synonymous with family. So he says, go back to your house, perhaps back to your family, and do what? And report what God has done for you. Now, hear that carefully because we're going to learn something. Many times I'm asked, do I believe in the divinity of Messiah? Yes, I do. And here's a great example because Yeshua says to him, report to all. Tell first your family, but report, declare what God has done, all that God has done for you. And notice what the scripture says, last part of verse 39. And he went away through all of that city. And what was he doing? He was proclaiming. Proclaiming what? Yeshua had done, done for him. Now, why is that important? Because when you look at the, the beginning of verse 39, it says all that God has done. And then it says all that Yeshua has done. And what is the purpose of that? To tell us that, that Yeshua and God, I believe in three persons, in that Godhead in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But this scripture is telling us in a very clear way, if you understand how to interpret the Bible, it's telling us that Yeshua is God. And I will tell you this, when someone begins to reject and doubt the deity of Christ, you know what happens? They begin to doubt other things in this book, and they begin to doubt them and not deal with them properly. They don't implement them into their life. And soon thereafter, they make poor decisions. And those poor decisions lead to them falling under demonic attack. They are deceived and they do not produce the fruit that God has called his disciples to do. So let me conclude by saying this. This is the word of God. Believe it, accept it, and implement it into your life. That is the surest way that you will find yourself being positioned in the will of God. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.